Hello, I'm Susan Catalano, the co-founder and chief science officer of Cognition Therapeutics. I'm going to talk about the preclinical evidence that indicates that Cognition's drug candidate 1812 is an Alzheimer's disease modifying therapeutic and update you on its clinical progress. I'd like to start by thanking the fantastic team at Cognition, as well as our distinguished scientific and medical advisors and collaborators within industry and academia who made this research possible, as well as Dr. Susanna Penincheska and Lori Ryan at the National Institute on Aging for their support and guidance. And finally, I'd like to thank the Alzheimer's patients and their caregivers and families for their contribution to this research. By way of disclosure, I am a shareholder and full-time employee of Cognition, we're deeply grateful for the support we've received for the clinical and preclinical discovery and development of our drug candidate 1812 from our peers and the National Institute on Aging, as well as the Alzheimer's Drug Discovery Foundation and NINDS. We ask that you not record or distribute this presentation. And I'll start by taking you through the hypothesis for our drug 1812's mechanism of action, which our NIA program officers refer to as a next generation anti amyloid approach because the drug interacts with A-beta oligomers in a novel way that's unique among the AD therapeutics in development. 1812 is a first-in-class selective high affinity sigma-2 allosteric antagonist. And what Cognition discovered was that by tweaking the shape of the sigma-2 complex, we could in turn destabilize the A-beta oligomer binding site, increase the off rate of oligomers, and stop the downstream toxicity. So I'll take you through this. In panel A, the sigma-2 receptor complex includes the proteins PGRMC1 and TMM97, and together they regulate the A-beta oligomer receptor complex. In B, when A-beta oligomers bind to their receptor, they alter its associations or functions leading to synaptic plasticity and memory failure and eventual synaptic damage and loss. When 1812 binds to the sigma-2 receptor in C and changes its shape, this in turn destabilizes the oligomer binding pocket and we observe an increase in the off rate of A-beta oligomers and synapse number in the process of learning and memory are restored to normal levels. PGRMC1 and TMM97 both regulate cholesterol pathways and PGRMC1 also regulates progesterone signaling, autophagy and protein and lipid trafficking. So sigma-2 receptors regulate key cellular damage responses that are impacted in many diseases in addition to AD. The preclinical evidence supporting this hypothesis is shown here, so I'll take you through these vertical columns of data from left to right briefly, since uh, we have shown this data previously. In panel A, we've shown that 1812 can dose-dependently displace oligomers from neurons in vitro and decrease A-beta oligomer binding affinity. As you can see in B, this is also the case in frozen AD patient brain tissue. And we verified that the material displaced out of these tissue sections is a beta oligomers in collaboration with Paris Fires Jones. In panel C, 1812 treatment of AD mice increases a beta oligomers in the interstitial fluid of the hippocampus, which is the blue graph, and rather unexpectedly also in the CSF as well, in the red graph suggesting that once the oligomers are displaced from their receptor, 1812 can either directly or indirectly facilitate their clearance out of the brain into the cerebrospinal fluid. This data was collected in collaboration with John Cerrito and Carla Ude. In panel D, once the oligomers are displaced, the synaptic protein expression in neurons is restored. So neurogranin, synaptotagmin, and SV2A levels are restored to normal levels. In panel E, synapse number in vitro returns to normal levels with 1812 treatment. And in panel F, learning and memory performance in 1812 treated AD mice in the solid green bars are indistinguishable from wild type litter mate levels in the blue bars. Together, this evidence indicates that by displacing A beta oligomers, 1812 stops the downstream toxicity and restores learning and memory to normal levels. Now we wanted to study the only protected mutation that both significantly lowers AD incidence and also exhibits strong functional evidence of protection, namely the Icelandic mutation, to see what this would tell us about the mechanism of action of 1812 and its likelihood of clinical success. In this rare mutation, the alanine at position two in the A-beta sequence or position 673 in the ATP sequence is changed to three in A and the carriers have a fourfold lower risk of Alzheimer's disease uh, and uh, non-AD related age uh, dependent cognitive decline. 
So we compared oligomers made with the A673T mutation containing A beta to oligomers made with wild type A beta side by side in in vitro studies with our collaborator, Harry Levine. And the results were surprising. The data was recently published in J Neurochem, and we found that mutant oligomers formed half the amount of oligomers as wild type, and the oligomers that do form have a four-fold lower binding affinity to synaptic receptors on neurons compared to wild type oligomers. In contrast, there was no difference in binding affinity of wild type and A673T olig oligomers to glial cell bodies. So the fourfold lower binding affinity of mutant oligomers are not simply a function of the lower oligomer concentration in the mutant oligomer preparation. The magnitude of the mutation's effect on synaptic receptor binding affinity, the fact that it was fourfold lower was unexpected. And the sheer size of this effect compared to the mutation's effect size on oligomer assembly rate or concentration or even toxicity suggested that it may play a predominant role in quantitatively contributing to the fourfold protection uh, that this mutation confers on uh, carriers. So this provides genetic validation uh, that drugs like 1812 that lower a beta oligomer binding affinity may be effective in Alzheimer's disease. 1812 was forwarded into double-blind placebo-controlled clinical trial testing, and initial studies showed that it was safe and well-tolerated in healthy young and elderly volunteers. And then it was advanced to a small first-in-patient study called CAGA-102, and I'll be describing the results from this study. Uh, following this, it was advanced to several phase two clinical studies listed here that were designed to measure drug impact on measures of synaptic physiology and target engagement. These are still ongoing. And I'll describe the results from the first set of 24 patients to complete six months of dosing in the SHINE trial as well. Now, because 1812 is a first-in-class mechanism, we plan to study a variety of biomarkers using a variety of approaches in these early clinical studies in order to guide subsequent development. In the CAGA-102 trial, uh, 19 mild to moderate Alzheimer's patients who were MMSC 18 to 26 on enrollment were randomized to one of three doses of 1812 or placebo uh, with the resulting four to five uh, patients per group. Uh, we did not observe, nor did we expect to see evidence of cognitive change with this short a dosing period. Uh, and because some of the uh, baseline or end of study CSF samples were not obtained uh, due to uh, problems with the spinal tap or consent uh, the end was reduced to as low as three, three patients per group. So uh, because of this low end, each patient's change from baseline value was averaged according to the treatment group, and the treatment group averages were pooled and compared to placebo group values. So A, B, and C graph the pooled treated group average values in open symbols with the placebo values in orange diamonds. The error bars are the standard deviation, and the y-axis is the change from baseline values. Uh, the group A shows the change in CSF oligomer concentration measured by native Westerns. And here we observed an increase in drug-treated patients compared to their own baseline that was significantly different from the placebo group. Graph B shows the change in neurogranin concentration measured by ELISA at the University of Gothenburg in collaboration with Kai Blenov and Henrik Zederberg. Here we observed a decrease in drug-treated patients compared to their own baseline that was significantly different from the placebo group. We also measured A beta 40 and 42 monomer and neurofilament light by ELISA, as well as SNAP25 by ELISA, followed by TAN and mass spec, and none of these changed. Graph C shows the change in CSF synaptic tagment concentration that was measured by mass spec at Caprion Biosciences in collaboration with Dan Spellman. Here we observed a decrease in drug treated patients compared to their own baseline that was significantly different from the placebo group. So, oligomers in the CSF increased. Neurogranin and synaptic tagmin decreased and the others did not change with 28 days of treatment. So we capped a wider net to look at more proteins than just the one the ELISAs could measure and the results of the tandem mass spec measurements done at Proteome Sciences by our collaborator Ian Pike and his team are shown on the next slide. The data are displayed slightly differently here. Uh, here the change from baseline y-axis is actually rotated 90 degrees clockwise. So you see it along the top of the graph. And the difference between the treated and placebo group averages is graphed as the ratio of treated divided by placebo values. 
So bars moving to the right of the origin mean the protein abundance is increasing in drug-treated patients compared to placebo. And the bars moving to the left mean it's decreasing compared to placebo. Graph D shows the percent change in synaptic proteins during the trial. Uh, and these were a set of 537 synaptic proteome uh, proteins that were defined in the Leo et al. 2019 paper. Of these, 346 were actually detected in RCSF samples, and 25 of those were significantly different between drug and placebo treated patient groups by ANOVA. These proteins are linked to important pathways that are dysregulated in AD, and they're color coded by those pathways that they're part of which includes important categories like cytoskeletal and synapse assembly processes, adhesion, mitochondrial function, and neurotransmission. Several of these proteins are linked to Sigma-2 receptor protein biology. And when we conduct formal pathway analysis on these changes using three independent bioinformatics platforms, IPA, Metacore, and String, it indicates that 1812 impacts synaptic biology significantly. These changes are consistent with the preclinical data I showed you earlier, showing restoration of synapse density and reduction of synapse damage following 1812 treatment. Graph E shows a comparison of CSF protein changes observed in this study, shown in the blue bars, compared to those reported to be significantly dysregulated in AD versus age match control patients, shown in the red bars. This is data published by Nick Seyfried's group in 2019. Uh, Nick and his colleagues reported 520 proteins were significantly different in 80 patient CSF compared to age match controls. Of that set of proteins, 334 were detected in our CSF samples, and 20 of these moved in the opposite direction as in the AD versus control. So they were also significantly different between the 1812 treated group and placebo, so about 6% of the total. Now, bear in mind, this is a bit of apples to oranges since the AD versus control uh, values are cross-sectional comparisons while our trial data are longitudinal changes by group. So many of the proteins that are dysregulated in AD patients are being normalized or changed in the opposite direction by 1812 treatment. Graph F shows the measurement of phosphorylation at individual amino acid sites along the length of the protein tau. And this method of measuring uh, tau phosphorylation was pioneered by Proteome Sciences. And they can reliably detect about 36 of the possible phosphorylation sites within tau and CSF samples, as well as the unphosphorylated tau. Uh, following 28 days of treatment, the abundance of six tau phosphorylation peptides decreased by 30%, while one site increased by more than 30%. But the concentration of unphosphorylated tau did not change. So uh, this is supported by literature indicating that the A-beta protein causes changes in tau phosphorylation, and it provides encouraging evidence that 1812 impacts pathological disease signaling. Now, the caveats here are that this is a very few patient samples, and they're treated for a short period of time. So summarizing the results of this trial after one month of treatment, Analysis of changes in each patient's protein abundance in CSF by ELISA or tandem mass spec compared to their own baseline revealed that synaptic pathways were significantly impacted. Many dysregulated proteins in the AD patients were reversed. PTAU uh, was decreased at several sites with no effect on unphosphorylated tau, uh, all told encouraging evidence of an impact on many of the disease pathways uh, in this trial. We recently completed the interim analysis of the first set of 24 patients to complete six months of dosing with 1812 in the SHINE trial, and the cognitive results are shown on the next slide. Here, uh, mild to moderate patients who were MMSC 18 to 26 on baseline were randomized to one of two doses of 1812 or placebo with an N of 8 per group. Because of the low numbers of patients, we pre-specified an ANCOVA analysis of ADIS-COG-11 with the last observation carried forward as the first analysis we do. And the least squares group average change from baseline data are graphed on the right with an inverted scale. So going down is getting cognitively worse. The 100 and 300 mg groups are shown in blue circles and inverted triangles respectively. And the placebo group with the orange diamonds when we look at this data, we see a trend for cognitive improvements 
versus placebo in both drug treated groups on day 185, the last day of the trial. Moreover, when we look at the other cognitive outcome measures and conduct an analysis categorizing the difference between treated and placebo into three groups, whether they favored drug, placebo, or no difference, the trend favoring drug was consistently seen across ADIS COG 11 and 13, as well as the mini mental state exam score and composite measures of cognitive function, executive function, memory, attention, as well as the activities of daily living and the global impression of change. The biofluid biomarker results from this trial indicate that in contrast to what we saw at one month of treatment, CSF levels of both A-beta 40 and 42 monomer are decreasing by about 24% in the high dose group. And levels of CSF monomer are correlated with drug concentrations in CSF. So this and other biomarker evidence that I'm not showing indicate that A-beta monomer lowering may be due to the disease-modifying effects of 1812 that manifest with longer-term dosing. So this is encouraging evidence of the drug impact not only on A-beta, but on disease biology itself. So in the meantime, as you can see, we'll continue 1812's development by enrolling additional patients in the SHINE trial and the other phase two trials shown here. And we were also recently awarded a grant to conduct a large efficacy trial with the Alzheimer's Clinical Trial Consortium. So we're honored to be working with Dr. Chris Van Dyke, Dr. Paul Asen, and the excellent team at ATRI. And I'm really looking forward to getting that trial started. In summary, I've shown you data from double-blind placebo-controlled trials indicating 1812 has a therapeutic impact on A-beta oligomers synaptic proteins, and phosphatau within, with 28-day treatment versus placebo. Uh, many of the AD-related proteins that are dysregulated in AD are reversed with drug treatment, and longer treatment with drug once daily for six months yield a trend for cognitive improvements and significant impact on A-beta levels in the CSF, which we think is evidence of disease modification. It's important to point out that this data is from small studies and must be considered preliminary and needs to be replicated in the larger ongoing studies. Nevertheless, we find it encouraging clinical evidence of the therapeutic impact that supports the continued development of 1812, which is a drug with a unique uh, genetically validated mechanism of action. Thank you very much.